Let's solve problem 7.5 for Microelectronic Circuits 8th edition by Cedrin Smith. Consider this amplifier for the case that VDD equals 5 volts, RD equals 24 kilo ohms. K in prime times DOV divided by L is equal to 1 milliamp per volt squared, and VT equals 1 volt. Part A. Find the coordinates of the two endpoints of the saturation region segment, the amplifier, transfer characteristic, that is points A and B. So A is pretty straightforward. The VGS axis, it has a coordinate VT, and the Y axis, VDS axis, it has the coordinate VDD. So the coordinate for A is simply VT, which is one volt, and VDD, which is five volts. Now for B, we can see that at B, we're kind of at this point here, and it's actually, for the VGS axis, uh, we can call it V overdrive at B. So B for VGS, that's going to be the threshold voltage plus V overdrive at B. And on the y-axis, this VDS, we'll just call that VDS at B. VDS at B is actually equal to the overdrive at B. And that is equal to square root of 2 times Kn times Rd times VDD plus 1. I'll learn that square root. Minus 1 divided by Kn times Rd. So let's solve for VDS at B. That's equal to the square root of 2 times Kn, which is 1 milliamp per volt squared, times Rd, 24 kilo ohms, times Vdd, 5 volts, plus 1. Cover all that under the square root. Notice that milliamp is 10 to the power of negative 3, and kilo ohm is 10 to the power of 3, so those powers will cancel out. Okay, now we subtract 1, and we're going to divide it by 1 times 24. Okay. So I get that VDS at point B is equal to 0 0.61 volts. That is the Y coordinate. The X coordinate VGS is, again, Threshold voltage plus V overdrive, so that's 1 volt plus overdrive, which is the same as VDS, so 0 0.61, so that's equal to 1.61 volts. So B has the coordinates of 1.61 volts and 0 0.61 volts. So those are the coordinates for A and B. Let's move on to part B. All right, let's keep going with part B. If the amplifier is biased to operate with an overdrive voltage of 0 0.5 volts, find the coordinates of the bias point Q. Also find ID and incremental gain AV at the bias point Q. Okay, so if we look at the transfer characteristic right here, we have VT and Q, which is at VGS. This gap in between VT and VGS is actually V overdrive, meaning VGS at Q is just equal to VT plus V overdrive. That's 1 volt plus 0 0.5 volts, which is 1.5 volts. So that's the VGS coordinate. The VDS coordinate is actually equal to, oh, we don't know that yet because it's going to be, if you look at this right here, this is what we're solving for. It's going to be VDD minus ID times RD. And I need to find ID in order to solve that. So let's focus on ID now. If we look at this curve again, so the points from A to B, this is the saturation region. 
So Q is in the saturation region. And you can use the saturation region equation for drain current, which is 1 half Kn times V over J squared. That's 1 half times 1 milliamp per volt squared times 0 0.5 volts squared, which is equal to 0 0.125 milliamps. So we actually already solve for our current now. Now I can go back and solve for VDS at Q. That's going to be VDD, 5 volts minus the current, 0 0.125 milliamps, multiplied by RD, which is 24 kilo ohms, and that is equal to 2 volts. So our coordinate for Q, VGS, is 1.5 volts, and at, uh, VDS, it's 2 volts. And lastly, we just need to solve for gain. I'm going to use the equation negative Kn V over drive times Rd. So it's going to be negative 1 milliamp per volt squared times V over drive times Rd, 24 kilo ohms. So I get an incremental gain of negative 12 volt per volt. Let's move on to part C. All right, let's take a look at part C. For the situation in B, which just stated that V over drive was 0 0.5, okay. Disregarding the distortion caused by the MOSFET square law characteristic, what is the largest amplitude of a sine wave voltage signal that can be applied at the input while the transistor remains in saturation? So that's really asking, what's the biggest value here, VGS, we can apply such that we do not exit the region between A and B, because this is the saturation region. So from part A, we calculated this point here, right? It was VGS at B, and that was equal to 1.61 volts. That means the maximum instantaneous input signal that will not take the transistor out of saturation is 1.61 volt, and the corresponding output voltage would be on the y-axis, which was 0 0.61 volts. So in other words, this would be your maximum input, and this would be your output for that corresponding input. So therefore, we can calculate the maximum amplitude, excuse me, of the input sine wave to be 1.61 volts minus, minus what? It needs to be minus the value of VGS at this PSM point Q. This is VGS, this little uh, square change. This is what we're calculating. We're calculating how big this difference can be. So if we go from B and subtract the voltage at Q, which was 1.5 volts, that would tell us how big this window can be without taking us out of the saturation region, since 0 0.11 volts. So that means that VGS ranges from uh, basically 1.5 minus 0 0.11, which is equal to 1.39 volts. So that means uh, when it asks, what is the amplitude of the output voltage? Again, that's 0 0.61 volts. Now it's asking, uh, what gain value does a combination of these amplitudes, et cetera, et cetera. So we can calculate the current in this region to be 1 half times Kn times Vgs minus Vt squared. So that would be 1 half times 1 milliamp per volt squared multiplied by 1.39 volts minus 1 volt squared. And that's equal to 0 0.076 milliamps. 
And we can calculate VDS, this point here, as VDD, which is 5 volts, minus ID times RD, so 0 0.076 milliamps, times RD, 24 kilo ohms. So I get VDS is equal to 3.175 volts. And then the maximum VGS would be, excuse me, VGS at its maximum would be 1.61 volts. And again, VDS would be 0 0.61 volts. So therefore the largest signal gain AV max would be VDS minus this value of VDS we calculated, given that disregarding the distortion part, 3.175 volts divided by our original value of VGS minus the small signal comparable. And that is equal to negative 11.7 volt per volt. And that magnitude is a little less than the incremental uh, gain from part B. In part B it was negative 12 volt to volt. So why is there a difference? So this difference indicates that the transfer characteristic here is not a straight line. It says that this is just a linear approximation. And in fact, the actual curve is a lot more exponential than it's showing here on the graph. So hopefully that answers any doubts you may have from this question. Thank you for watching my video. For any questions, comments, or video suggestions, feel free to contact me in the comments or by my email. Thank you and have a great day.